Hi, Marie here. Welcome to my channel. And today I am going to be sharing with you perfumes that I absolutely can't stand and will never buy, even though they are super popular. I'm so excited, but I'm also going to share with you an alternative to that. So it may be either similar vibes, similar uh, fragrance family, similar notes, something like that. But I want to share with you some alternatives. And I am going to say just right off the bat that these are, it's going to hurt your heart. Like you're going to hear it and you may love that perfume. Like you may absolutely adore it and your jaw might drop. Uh, and that's just life. <laughs> the reality is, is that all of our noses are different. It's what I love about being human is that we've all been created differently. And so the perfumes that I can't stand may be one of your favorites. And that's okay. I'm not saying that these perfumes are hideous. They're hideous to me, or, or not necessarily hideous, but I don't like them. Uh, for whatever reason, but you may love them and that is totally fine. Not that you need my permission, but you just go ahead and love that sucker. <laughs> so let's get started. Before we do, if you haven't subscribed, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I would love for you to be par part of the Weird and Wonderful family and uh, yeah, be part of the community. That would be amazing. And without further ado, let's get into this. So the first perfume that I will never be purchasing is Armani C. <laughs> I just, uh, I do not like Armani C. Now, interesting story. Uh, it was one of the first perfumes that I smelt when I started really getting into perfumes. And I was with my sister, Brunel, and we had gone shopping. It was actually on my birthday. This was a year ago. And so uh, I sprayed Armani C on my arm and I was so in the moment. And when I go shopping with my sister, Brunel, I get so excited about everything. Like we hype each other into a frenzy. Like basically I'd like to hold hands with her walking through the mall, kind of skipping around like children. Like I just love hanging out with her. So we're shopping, we're, we're smelling all these fragrances and there was one that caught my eye and it was actually Armani C. And so we sprayed it on my arm and the whole entire time, like I'm walking through the mall and I'm going, oh, this smells like money. Smell it, Bernal. And so she would smell it and we're like, yeah, it reminds me of the Four Seasons when we were kids because we always went to the Four Seasons when we were growing up. Uh, but anyway, sniffing it and it's like, oh, it smells so amazing, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I really loved it and I almost bit the bullet and bought it because that day they had a woman in there that was actually painting on perfume bottles. And so I thought, oh, that would be amazing to have like a, an actual kind of special bottle for my special birthday because uh, I was turning 50. And uh, I decided to hold off because I thought, well, usually it takes me a few times to, to decide. So I didn't buy it and I'm really thankful that I didn't. I actually got a sample and I got home and I tried it and it actually made me feel sick to my stomach. It was just too sweet. It was a little bit cloying and a little bit too just nothing. So it was very sweet. It was pretty enough, but it didn't move me in any way, shape or form. Like for whatever reason, it just didn't do it. And when I'd smell it, it'd be like, Ugh, that would be my response rather than, ah. So I just decided not to get it. And I tried it several times. I almost bought it. I saw it at Costco for a really good deal. Almost bought it, but I just, it's just not for me. So that one's a pass. But what I do love is uh, C uh, Fiore. So uh, C Fiore, the one in the kind of um, uh, frosted pink bottle. Uh, I love that one. I just think that one's really pretty. It's got more fruits in it. Uh, and that would be the one that I would choose over just the regular C. So that one is more my taste. I want to smell C Passione, uh, but as far as the regular C, I just can't get on with it. It just to me is just boring, like honestly. So that one's a pass. Next fragrance that I will never buy is YSL Libre. I, I, I don't like it. It, it smells, it, it's kind of to me the same as C. For whatever reason, my nose picks it up the same as C, but a little bit of lavender in it. 
And so it just smells, I guess uh, both of them are, I get more of the vanilla than anything else. So to me, it's just kind of a boring vanilla perfume. Uh, uh, Libre, I hear people talking about it and it's like, oh, it's such a powerhouse. It's so beautiful. And I just can't relate. I've tried it uh, like again, a couple times on my skin and it's just boring to me. Other, like it's got that vanilla and the lavender, but what I would choose instead and have is Mon Guerlain. So this has the lavender note. This one's a little sweeter. It's less of a, you know, I've heard people describe uh, Libre as um, kind of a powerhouse boss lady fragrance. I wouldn't consider this a boss lady fragrance, but it does have the lavender. And I just think it's a prettier scent. I think it's more interesting. Uh, yeah, I, I just way prefer this one. I find it more interesting. Um, it's, it's something other than vanilla and lavender. And again, I'm not saying that's what you smell. That's what I smell. So, uh, yeah, I would choose Mon Guerlain if you're wanting kind of that lavender fix and you're not crazy about Libre, try this one. The next one that I absolutely will never buy is Hypnotic Poison. I, by Dior, I, I can't, I just can't do it. I've got the dupe from La Rive and I've tried it several times and I, like even talking about it, my mouth starts to water in a bad way. <laughs> It, the doll's heady, sweet, play doh type vibe, I just, I cannot handle it. Like, it just, it, it just doesn't work for me at all. So I know a lot of people love it. I just, I can't get into it. But what I do love is Poison Girl. I have a, a like a, a fairly large sample of Poison Girl, but I also have uh, Fleur de Femme by La Rive, which is supposed to be the dupe. Pretty similar. Um, this one, you still get a little bit of that Play-Doh vibe. In fact, just because I'm talking about it, I can kind of smell that Play-Doh doll head. Uh, it's the almond, I would say. Uh, I'm smelling it, but it, it's balanced out with a little bit more fruit. Uh, and for whatever reason, the fruit just helps to take down that sickeningly sweet almondy doll head vibe, uh, which I just, I can't do. If I hear... <laughs> To be honest, I haven't even wanted to try Baccarat Rouge 540. The reason why is because people have said that it smells a little bit like a Band-Aid or like there's a Band-Aid note in it. The thought of, sm I hate the smell of Band-Aids. I hate the smell of doll heads. Like, ew, I, I can't do it. So um, <laughs> Hypnotic Poison is out for me, but something like Poison Girl, I even uh, don't mind Pure Poison. Uh, but Hypnotic Poison, just too heavy with that almond sweetie. It, it's just cloying to me. So it's a pass. Now the next one is super popular for a lot of people. In fact, my good friend Lori, it's one of her signature scents. Uh, and that is Light Blue by Dolce & Gabbana. And it, uh, like, I can remember when I first met Lori, uh, she always had light blue on and every time I, I came to see her, I'd give her a big hug and I'd say, oh, what are you wearing? It smells so good. And it was always light blue. And so I thought to myself, well, it smells so amazing. I want it. So I tried it, like I tried it on my skin and I've tried it again several times on my skin and it just does not work for me. Somehow uh, the citrus comes out, it smells too fresh on her. It smelled citrusy, but also sweet. So there was this wonderful sweet component. On me, it smelled citrusy and sharp. So I didn't get that warm, sweet component. It just smelled sharp on me. So it's one that just doesn't work for my skin chemistry. But uh, the one that does, and I, I got this not too long ago, and I will be including it in a, a haul coming soon, is Trisardi Donna. Now this one, uh, this one is, uh, again, kind of that, that, uh, uh, that citrus opening with some sweet, but I would say this one is a heavier sweet. Uh, they, they don't smell the same at all. But this one would be my, uh, like, you know, if I wanted to wear kind of a citrusy sweet smell, uh, this would be the one, like a citrusy sweet kind of a little bit fresh smell. Uh, I would go for Trisardi Donna instead of something like uh, light blue. 
Uh, this one, again, it doesn't smell anything like light blue. It has uh, lemon and yuzu in it, uh, but it's, um, it's coupled with some sweetness, like some sweet, it almost smells a little bit like powdered sugar to me. Uh, it reminds me of a, a lemon Turkish delight where they've got the icing sugar on it. Somehow this kind of reminds me of it. But so it's it's fresh, but still sweet. And I love this one. I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. It's sophisticated, uh, intoxicating in a kind of fresh, vibrant, sunshiny type of way. <laughs> so anyway, love Trisardi Donna. The next fragrance that I will never purchase is Angel. Now, usually it said you're either an angel or an alien girl, and like I wish that I was an alien an angel, but I would say I'm definitely more of an alien, like on so many levels, more of an alien. <laughs> angel is just too much for me. It's too cloying, and my guess is people that love angel go, alien is too much for me. I love alien. I don't even think of alien as a nighttime scent. I would wear alien anytime, honestly. I don't find it overly strong. I love it. Angel to me is heavy and cloying and just way too much. It's like too much of a mosh of notes for my nose. And the patchouli is way too much for me. So angel is an absolute no. But I've got two alternatives for you. I have Angel Muse, either the EDP or the EDT. You still get that patchouli and it's that sweet, there's a bit of an angel vibe in this, but it's toned down substantially. These are just delicious fragrances. This one, the EDT, uh, has passion fruit in it, and then there's hazelnut in it. So it's still a gourmand, uh, but it's just a lot more, um, I don't know, somehow I don't find this one quite as cloying. And another one, it's not the same uh, by any means, but it would be, uh, I have La Rive Taste of Kiss, which is uh, the dupe for La Nuit Tresor. So that one has a mosh of notes, more of an evening fragrance, uh, definitely more gourmand. This one leans quite chocolatey in my opinion. Uh, but like if I wanted something that was kind of like a mosh of note gourmand, I would lean towards something like uh, La Nuit Tresor or uh, the, the dupe. Now the next fragrance that I will absolutely never buy, same thing, I found it at Costco and was so tempted. I found it for $50 for a 50 ml bottle and that is Black Orchid. I have tried to like this fragrance because kind of all the, the uh, perfume people that I just really admire love Black Orchid. I can't stand it. I, I just can't. I think that's one thing to remember too. Um, you know, sometimes everybody that you know seems to love a fragrance and you don't love it. Just be true to yourself. Don't try to like don't try get it just so that you can feel like you're part of the crew. Like the reality is, is that our noses pick up different things. If you don't like it, just don't like it. Like it's totally okay. It's a little disappointing because I want to smell what everybody else is smelling, but that's not the way it works in life. And so I, I, there's lots of perfumes that just really do it for me that maybe they won't like, and they don't know what I'm smelling either, right? So uh, don't be upset if everybody seems to love a fragrance and you don't. Just, just be true to yourself, because that way you'll enjoy what you enjoy and not try to enjoy something because everyone else is. So anyway, Black Orchid. Uh, I saw it at Costco for 50 bucks. It was on sale and I'm like, oh, and, and, but I ended up getting a sample. And uh, if I smelt it on a, a Kleenex or something, it'd be kind of like, Ugh. and then I'd kind of start to, you know, it's kind of almost addicting uh, in a really weird kind of sicky way. I don't know what it is about it, but when I smell black orchid, it reminds me kind of of death. Like I think, I think obviously it's very uh, indolic, uh, but but it reminds me of death. So when I think black orchid, I think of a black orchid that's kind of like a zombie, almost part human. Like it's part human, <laughs> part human. Like I get very visual and a very major visceral response. To me, Black Orchid is like a horror movie. It'd be like a person that was kind of part Black Orchid, zombie-ish, so like 
kind of crazy hair and the eyes are all like this and dark under the eyes. Like I totally get zombie vibes off of Black Orchid and I feel like it's something that would kind of clom to you and then kind of stick there and start sucking the life out of you. That's what Black Orchid reminds me of. I like, I'm like, I don't know if it's the truffle or what it is, pepper or something, but it just smells like it's, it's a horror it's a horror perfume. It belongs on Halloween. It It's just not for me. Like, it, it smells evil, in my opinion. Is that too harsh? It smells totally evil to me. Like, so, in a way, I'm intrigued because it's so creepy to me that I want to sniff it. But, like, I put it on the other day to try it. So, I I sprayed a few times on my hand and on my neck and I could not stand myself all day. It just puts me into kind of a weird mood. Uh, the scent is weird and not until it was about 12 hours later was it finally actually really quite nice. So about 12 hours in I thought this smells like a nice dessert. And so you know people talking about it being a gourmand to me, it smells like a death zombie flower person, <laughs> but but then like, you know, Gourmandi, in the end, it smells really quite pretty, but to get there, I, I just can't get on board. So for me, it's an absolute no. I don't find it uh, as sexy as I do like literally repugnant. So it is, I it's off the table for me. And it, it could be because I'm immature, like my nose is immature. Could be because my nose just doesn't smell the same things that they're smelling. So instead, I love Tom Ford Noir Pour Femme. Now, uh, a lot of times when I hear people talk about Black Orchid, they talk about it being quite sexy, quite gourmand. To me, that's this. So this, this is just amazing. It's still got kind of a different quality to it. It's quite unique, uh, but it's got the dessert and kind of cacao or, you know, just kind of that gourmandy sense, but just with this sexy, sensual vibe to it. I love it. I just think this one is super sensual, super intoxicating. It smells rich. Uh, so it's right up there in the Tom Ford-esque. Uh, nature, but to me this one is way more pal palatable and it gives me that dessert-like quality that I noticed at the end of Black Orchid. It gives me that right off the bat and that's what I love. So Noir Pour Femme smells so sexy. I'm gonna put it on right now. Oh yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I love it. I love it. It's in my mouth, but I still love it. Ugh. Why do I, I don't know how I do that every time. I don't normally spray it into my mouth. Somehow I always manage to on camera. One other fragrance that I would say kind of gives me that same vibe uh, as Black Orchid. It's kind of a, a weird fragrance, but sexy would be Black Lotus by Floral Street. Now this is a complete departure. It doesn't smell, uh, it doesn't smell like Black Orchid in the slightest. Well, neither does Noir Profound, but this one, it's just weird. It's sexy, uh, but it's it's different. So this one, I can see a lot of people not liking it. It smells like leather, uh, some sort of floral leather, and, and cigarettes. <laughs> and for whatever reason, I find this one so exceptionally sexy, I can't, I can't even handle it. Like... Oof, this one smells good. This one smells, you know, like, <laughs> like, you know, in the movies or maybe in real life where you've got a major attraction to someone and then all of a sudden you lock eyes and there's that massive chemistry where kind of like something inside you just kind of goes and you feel that flush uh, from just the, the excitement of the connection. That's what this smells like. <laughs> maybe, maybe I find that connection dirty. I don't know, but this smells seriously like cigarettes, leather, cologne, and perfume all mixed together. It smells nasty. <laughs> it smells nasty in the most amazing, intoxicating way. So I'm definitely going to get a full bottle of this one. I don't think anyone around me 
would love being around me when I'm wearing this because I would smell like uh, kind of like a dirty bar. <laughs> I love it. Like I love this one. Okay, now the next fragrance that I will never purchase is Chloe Nomad. And again, I know how popular that one is. It um, it just for whatever reason I I don't like it. It it I think it's the plum in it. I'm not a fan of that plum note. Uh, but overall, it kind of to me falls in the same category as the C or Lieb. It's just kind of. Uh, a lot of vanilla with some fruit or whatever. It smells generic to me. Uh, I know a lot of people really love Chloe Nomad, but it just, you know, it, it just, it, it's not there for me. I don't know if it's the plum or what. I, it, I just don't like it. I think it's boring. So um, uh, thinking from a sheep perspective, uh, the one that uh, I just think is exciting, like I know uh, Chloe Nomad is considered a modern sheep. Um, I would go with something like Coco Mademoiselle. That's more my vibe. Uh, it, it, this one's definitely a sheep. Uh, so is actually uh, Sophia by Sophia Vergara. Uh, completely not the same. Uh, although Sophia, Ver uh, Sophia has a plum note, which I for some reason enjoy, but it's also got some black currant. Um, again, the, these don't smell anything like Chloe Nomad, but just thinking from a sheep perspective, uh, these two would be the the direction that I would head as opposed to doing uh, Nomad. The next one that I'm just not a fan of is Carolina Herrera's Good Girl. Now, um, probably the biggest reason why I am not a fan of this one is I don't like the bottle, which I think is majorly shocking to a lot of people because a lot of people really love the stiletto heel. Uh, to me, it's kind of tacky. I I like... Uh, glass more traditional looking bottles. I don't mind something that's a little different like this one uh, but overall I prefer like a more traditional bottle as opposed to a bottle looking like something uh, whether it's a head or whatever although I don't mind the Jean-Paul Gaultier bottles with the like shape like a body uh, those ones I don't mind but for whatever reason the the stiletto to me, it just looks really uncomfortable. <laughs> like I would never wear, I couldn't wear a stiletto. Uh, I would, I wouldn't, yeah, I hate, I hate how uncomfortable stilettos are. So uh, it's not really my thing. So the look of the bottle doesn't do it for me. Um, I think it's awkward. And then the scent, um, it's nice, but again, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't move me. It doesn't really, it, it's just, it's just, it's just not me. So again, like if I'm wanting a sexy fragrance, I would go for something like the Tom, Tom Ford Noir Perfume or something like Alien Essence Absolute. Uh, you know, just a little bit like it's got that richness to it, uh, but just, just a little bit more my vibe. So anyway, that is my list of popular perfumes that I just can't get on with. Uh, one other one that I've mentioned would be Burberry Her. I love the smell of Burberry Her in the opening. Uh, it smells like kind of berries and cream, like strawberry, but also a little bit of like just a whole like mosh of berries and cream. Love the opening, but then the way it dries down is quite medicinal and I just don't like it. So I uh, prefer Hanny Mori by Hanny Mori. I've mentioned it before uh, and I have that one and it, it's not the same, like they don't smell the same, but as far as kind of a berries and vanilla cream uh, vibe that's still kind of airy, I, I get that from that one. I still prefer the opening, honestly, of Burberry Her. Uh, but I like the dry down of the Hanny Mori and, and it just, it sits better on my skin. So. Uh, yeah, to satiate my berries and cream, I would go with Hannah Mori. And that brings us to the end. Now, I'm sure there will be more perfumes as I explore them. Uh, but yeah, those are the ones uh, that I absolutely can't get on with, uh, either because they're frankly kind of boring to my nose, uh, or they, they're putrid to my nose. <laughs> Uh, what are the fragrances that you just will never purchase? You just aren't into them. 
uh, you don't understand the hype. And again, I don't think hype's a bad thing. In fact, I think hype, like all hype is, is people are loving the fragrance. I think that's great. Or, you know, like what I've noticed in the YouTube community is, you know, uh, doodle love a fragrance and so she'll just talk about it non-stop and ooh, this is amazing and everyone goes huh that sounds good so everyone buys it and then everyone starts talking about it i don't think that that's bad at all um i just think that means everybody's <laughs> excited whether something is worth the hype or not even that term i'm not against that term it's like that's a personal it, everything in perfume is subjective so if something isn't i don't think it's rude to say that's not worth the hype because uh, it's only your opinion, and and you are allowed that opinion. Hallelujah! We're allowed to have different opinions. So uh, you can think that something's not worth the hype, and I can think it's the best thing since sliced bread, and we can smile and hold hands and be happy for each other. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's, that's it. Um, what are the fragrances that you just they you just like what is the big deal why is everybody talking about this i would love to know but if you leave a comment on something that you don't understand why someone doesn't like it tell me what you like instead so let's let's balance out the negative with some positive okay <laughs> have an amazing week and we'll talk to you soon